As you might know, recognizing handwritten digits like these used to be incredibly challenging for computers until technology advanced enough to run artificial neural networks. But what if I told you that what you're seeing right now isn't a neural network at all? Instead, it's a completely different machine learning algorithm that, in this case, seems to be relentlessly splashing these poor numbers with water. In this video, I'll explain the algorithms behind this system, and by the end, you'll hopefully be able to build your own. First, let's explore how humans can recognize these digits so easily. Right now, as you look at these numbers, your brain receives hundreds of millions of signals from photosensitive cells in your eyes. It uses these signals to extract patterns from what you see. For example, you might notice that this six has a circle at the bottom, or that this seven has a cross in the middle. For our application to tell numbers apart, we need to write an algorithm that extracts features from these images. This is where the water comes in. Imagine splashing water onto a number. Let's pour water from all four sides and measure how much gets trapped by the number. This gives us a four-dimensional vector that represents some of the number's features. But this alone isn't enough information. To make it more precise, let's split each vector component in two. For example, if we pour water from the top, we separately count the accumulated water on the left and right sides of the number, then add those to our final vector. We repeat this process for all four sides, which gives us an eight-dimensional vector. Finally, we drop the number into a bucket of water and measure how much water surrounds it. This value becomes the ninth and final dimension of our feature vector. Together, this vector describes the number's features. In my code, I implemented the water pouring using a breadth-first search algorithm. For example, when I wanted to find the accumulated water on the left side, I started the search from the right edge of the image and moved to new empty pixels as long as they weren't blocked by the number and didn't require moving backwards. This constrained search intentionally avoids expanding into areas where water would accumulate. You can apply this from all four sides to measure trapped water and an unconstrained search to measure water surrounding the number. Now that we have the features, we can write our machine learning algorithm. The one I used is called K Nearest Neighbors. First, we need a lot of data. We run our feature extraction algorithm on every image in the dataset to generate a labeled feature vector for each one. Our feature vector is nine-dimensional, so it's impossible to visualize directly. But if we could plot these points in this crazy nine-dimensional space, we'd see clusters, or clouds, where points representing the same digit are grouped together. To make this easier to visualize, Let's plot just two dimensions, the accumulated water from the left and top sides. You can clearly see that orange points representing fours are grouped here as they trap a lot of water from the top, while blue points representing twos are grouped here as they trap more water on the left. To classify a new handwritten number, we calculate its feature vector and place it in the same space as our training data. Then, we find its nearest neighbors. The K in KNN refers to the number of neighbors to consider. In my case, I set K equal to four. Starting with the closest points, we count how many belong to each digit class. Once we find four neighbors representing the same digit, we classify the new number as that digit. To measure the closeness of points, we use Euclidean distance. In two dimensions, Euclidean distance is just the Pythagorean theorem, the square root of the sum of the squared differences between the point's coordinates. Amazingly, this same formula works in nine dimensions. While we can't visualize it, the math scales up perfectly. I find it really satisfying that with these simple rules, we can create a system that's somewhat intelligent it's far from perfect, though, 
my implementation is accurate about 85% of the time. And for every prediction, it has to calculate the distance to all the points in our data set, which can be slow. To speed this up, we could use a k-dimensional tree partitioning algorithm, but that's a topic for another video. This video took a lot of time and effort to make, so if you'd like more videos like this, please consider subscribing, and feel free to leave new video suggestions in the comments. Thank you for watching.